NS coding is a great way to read and write data when using user defaults, and it's the most common option when you must write Swift code that lives alongside Objective-C code. However, if you're only writing Swift, the codable protocol is much easier. We already used the load partition JSON back in Project 7, but now we're loading and saving JSON. There are three primary differences between the two solutions. First, the codable system works on both classes and structs. We made person a class because NS coding only works with classes. But if you didn't care about Objective-C compatibility, you could make it a struct and use codable instead. Second, when we implemented NS coding in the previous video, we had to write methods to encode and decode objects ourselves. With codable, this is not needed unless you need more precise control. It does the work for you. And third, when you encode data using codable, you can save to the same format that NS coding uses if you want to. But a much more pleasant option is JSON. Codable reads and writes JSON natively. All three of those combined means you can define a struct to hold data and have Swift create those structs directly from JSON with no extra work from you. Anyway, to demonstrate more of Codable in action, I'm going to go ahead and close Project 12A and instead open up Project 12B in Xcode. This is back to being a vanilla copy of Project 10. There's no NS coding changes in here. So you can keep that away, 12A, to be stashed for later on as reference. First, let's modify the person class so it conforms to Codable. I'm going to person, and I'll say this thing, inherits from NS object, comma, Codable. And that's it. Just adding Codable to the class definition is enough to tell Swift we want to read and write this thing. And that's it. Yes, just adding Codable there to the class definition is enough to tell Swift we want to read and write this thing. So now we can go back to ViewController.Swift and add code to load and save the people array. As with NS coding, we're going to create a single save method we can use anywhere that's needed. This time it's going to use the JSON encoder class to convert our people array into a data object, which can then be saved to user defaults. This conversion might fail, so we'll use if let and try question mark so we save data only when the JSON conversion was successful. So I'll scroll down and add this new method now. Func save let JSON encoder equals a new JSON encoder. If let save data equals try question mark JSON encoder dot encode people, then we can write it out. I'll do let defaults equals user defaults dot standard defaults dot set save data for key people. If that fail for some reason, which never really happened, but as I'm being sure, we'll just print out uh, fail to save people like that. Just like with the NS coding example, we have to modify our collection views did select item at method, so we call self question mark dot save. That's up here. We're going to say at this point uh, self question mark dot save. So we save our data as soon as we rename a person. Then we'll find did finish picking media with info up here. And again, call save. Boom. Save. Finally, we need to load the array back from disk when the app runs. So add this code next to view did load. Up here, we'll say let defaults equals user defaults dot standard. If let saved people equals defaults dot object for key people as question mark data. Then we'll decode it by saying let JSON decoder equals a new JSON decoder. We'll use do and catch here to catch errors. So we'll say do people equals try JSON decoder dot decode. And we'll ask for an array of person dot self from saved people. And then catching the errors, print out failed to load people like that. Again, this code is effectively the save method in reverse. We use object for key up here to pull out the people data and typecast it to a data instance using if let and conditional typecast unwrap it safely. We then give that to an instance of JSON decoder to convert it back to an object graph, i.e. our array of people that can go in here. Once again, note the interesting syntax to decode. Its first parameter is array of person dot self, which is Swift's way of saying attempt to create an array of person objects from this data. 
This is why we don't need a typecast when we assign to the people property over here. This method, decode, will automatically return an array of people. Or if the conversion fails, then this catch block down here will run instead. 